the topic of today's lecture is uh, molecules with more than one chiral centers and uh, in this lecture we will be uh, studying uh, uh, something about erythro and thrio isomers <clears throat> and obviously you know the concept of uh, anisomers diastereomers and meso compounds will also come into play uh, later in the lecture <clears throat> So we have dealt with molecules with the, uh, which have one chiral center and in this lecture we will be elaborating this concept and we will be you know uh, using uh, those molecules we will see those molecules which have more than one chiral center. So <coughs> you know many organic compounds have more than one asymmetric carbons you know and uh, the more the number of asymmetric carbons in a molecule you know the more stereoisomers are possible for the said compound so if we know you know how many asymmetric carbons a compound has we can calculate the maximum number of stereoisomers for that compound so the number of stereoisomers depends on how many asymmetric centers a, a molecule have so greater the number of asymmetric carbons greater will be the number of stereoisomers possible for that compound so uh, the general formula is that a compound can have a maximum of 2 n stereoisomers where n stands for where n is equal to the number of chiral carbons. So 2 raised to power n is the formula. So uh, if uh, you know uh, the um, number of asymmetric carbons is 2. So 2 raised to power 2 equal to 4. So any as a, any molecule having f uh, two chiral centers will have four stereoisomers so this formula of but you know you have to uh, note uh, a very important point here that this formula of 2n stereoisomers is applicable to molecules with n dissimilar chiral centers so it is applicable to those molecules which have dissimilar chiral uh, uh, centers which have uh, dissimilar asymmetric centers this formula is not applicable to molecules which have similar chiral centers where meso forms are possible so this is a very important note that you have to uh, you know keep into consideration while deciding the total number of stereoisomers for a compound so further there will be 2 raised power n minus 1 pairs of n isomers possible for a molecule with more than one chiral centers we will take the example of this compound which is 3 chloro 2 butanol and it has two asymmetric carbons therefore as per the formula it can have you know 2 raised to power 2 is equal to 4 so four stereoisomers are possible so what are these four stereoisomers we'll see it this is the you know uh, 3 chloro 2 butanol as you can see it has two asymmetric carbons which are shown by um, you know stars these asterisk signs so it has two asymmetric carbons so theoretically speaking it will have four stereoisomers so what are those four stereoisomers these four stereoisomers are shown by the fischer projection formulas of, of the molecule this is one stereoisomer this is another stereoisomer this is the third one and this is the fourth one these are the four stereoisomers possible and these are its chiral centers these are the chiral centers here these are the chiral centers so these are the four different types of arrangements possible and uh, you know if you see the relationship between these two these two are mirror images of each other they are mirror images of each other so are these two mirror images of each other means one and two are mirror images three and four they are also mirror images so <clears throat> these uh, this is the you know uh, these are the perspective formulas of this three chloro two butanol as you can see you know this is a pair of enantiomers this is also a pair of, a pair of enantiomers and this is the three dimensional uh, structure three dimensional models of these compounds you know this is one uh, this is the 3d uh, model of one molecule this is the 3d model of its enantiomer this is 3d model of one molecule it's uh, this one is the 3d enantiomer of uh, 3d model of its enantiomer 
so <clears throat> but you know uh, the four stereo isomers of uh, 3-chloro, 2-butanol, uh, it consists of two pairs of enantiomers. So, there are two pairs of enantiomers and, uh, you, you know, uh, now we will use the concept of uh, two different terms. One is enantiomers, you know that, what are enantiomers. Second term is diastereomers. If you see you know, stereoisomers 1 and 2, they are enantiomers, we know that, they are non-superimposable mirror images of each other, they are enantiomers, 3 and 4, they are also enantiomers, right? But what is the relation between 1 and 3? Okay, what is the relation between 1 and 3, 1 and 4, 2 and 3 and 2 and 4? What is the relation? So, 1 and 2 are stereoisomers, three and, uh, 1 and 2 are enantiomers, 3 and 4 are also enantiomers, 1 and 3 are, you know, they are not identical, this 1 and 3, they are not identical, and they are not mirror images also. So, such stereoisomers, such stereoisomers, which are not mirror images of each other, they are called as distereomers. So, diastereomers are stereoisomers that are not enantiomers. So, I have categorized uh, uh, the different enantiomers of this, uh, different iso stereoisomers of this uh, molecule here. You know, uh, the relationship between 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, they are enantiomers of each other. But 1 and 3, 1 and 4, 2 and 3 and 2 and 4 they are diastereomers to each other and one point you must note down what are diastereomers diastereomers are not mirror images and this is very important they resemble configuration at one chiral center and you know at one chiral center they have the uh, same configuration while at the other chiral, chiral center they have the uh, you know different uh, configuration this is how you can recognize diastereomers okay so diastereomers have matching configurations at some chiral centers and you know opposite or different uh, you know, different uh, configurations at some other chiral centers. This is how you can, uh, you know, uh, identify, you can differentiate enantiomers from, you know, diastereomers. This is very important. And, uh, you know, diastereomers are stereoisomers that are not enantiomers. And regarding their, you know, uh, the difference between, uh, you know, enantiomers and diastereomers with regard to their properties you know enantiomers have same you know uh, physical properties except their behavior towards the plane polarizer light ppl and uh, you know they have identical chemical properties also meaning that they react at the same rate with a given a chiral reagent however if the reagent is chiral they will have different rates okay but diastereomers you see they have Different physical properties means their melting points are different, boiling points different, solubility is different, different specific rotations and they have different chemical properties meaning that they react with, with, uh, with, uh, with the same acaira reagent at different rates. Okay, they have the same, they, they have the different uh, rate of reaction even with the same acaira reagent. So, this is the main difference between enantiomers and diastereomers. And you know, uh, uh, for diastereomers to exist, a molecule must have more than one chiral center. That you know. Now we see what are these 3O and erythroisomers. 3O and erythro prefixes, you know, they are used in carbohydrate nomenclature mostly to distinguish between diastereomers. So, 3O and uh, erythro uh, nomen uh, nomenclature is to distinguish between diastereomers. So, in case of carbohydrates, when drawn in the Fischer projection, when we draw, uh, you know, carbohydrates in Fischer projection, the erythroisomer has two identical subsequents on the same side 
and the thrio isomer has two identical substituents on opposite side right so when a molecule is drawn in the fischer projection then erythro isomer has two identical substituents on the same side and thrio isomer has two identical substituents on the opposite side we'll see it you see this molecule is drawn as a fischer projection right so we call them as they are known as erythro isomers because they are in fischer projection and same atoms are same groups means hydrogen atoms are on the same side so they are erythro uh, enantiomers or erythro isomers we call them and in this case uh, you know same atoms means hydrogens are on the opposite side so they we call them as we call them as thrio enantiomers or we call them as thrio isomers but if you draw this uh, if you draw the molecule if you, uh, molecular structure uh, in a in a zigzag uh, chain or in a perspective formula right the erythro isomer in in that model in in perspective model the erythro isomer has the erythro isomer has two identical substituents on different sides of the plane and thrio has has these uh, two identical substituents on the same side of the plane so example is here you know this molecule is now drawn as a perspective formula and you see these two hydrogens they are the same atom same groups so when they are on opposite side of the plane means they are bonded by hatched and uh, you know solid wedges means they are on the opposite sides then we call them as erythro enantiomers and if the same uh, you know substituents are uh, groups are attached uh, you know they are on the same side of the plane means either they are attached by uh, both are attached, uh, attached by hatched wedge or both are attached by solid wedges then we call them as thrio enantiomers or thrio isomers means when uh, you know similar atoms are on the same side of the plane if the molecule is drawn as a perspective formula now we move to meso compounds what are meso compounds you know although four is the maximum possible number of stereoisomers when the compound has two stereogenic centers you know when a compound has two chiral centers uh, we already predicted that you know uh, the number of stereoisomers is four right <clears throat> but some compounds do not have four stereoisomers some are, some compounds have lesser number of stereoisomers and uh, when this thing happens when the three groups on one stereogenic center are the same as those on the other one of the isomers which is known as the meso form has a plane of symmetry and hence is optically inactive even though it has two asymmetric carbon so what i am saying that if the two chiral centers are same means three groups on one carbon are similar to the three groups on the other carbon you know one of the isomers which is known as the meso form the it uh, has a plane of symmetry hence it is optically inactive even though it has a it has two asymmetric carbons right so an example of a compound with two asymmetric carbons that has only three stereo isomers is 2,3 dibromobutane so we will see an example of a compound which has two asymmetric carbons but uh, only three stereo isomers are possible because one of the isomers is a meso form this is 2 comma 3 dibromobutane which has two similar asymmetric carbons so uh, the, the number of uh, stereo isomers will be less it will not be four it will be less than four it will be less than four so we'll see it so this is two comma three dibromobutane right this is the fischer projection this is one stereoisomer this is another stereoisomer and this is the third stereoisomer you see the fourth stereoisomer is missing there are only three stereoisomers possible even though the molecule has two chiral centers there are two chiral centers here right so why so you know i have written here it, it's written here that it is obvious that 
one stereo isomer one and its mirror image are identical when you look at the perspective formula in the eclipsed conformation means when you look in the eclipsed conformation you know this is uh, this is uh, you know now uh, uh, this is uh, one of the you know uh, one of the stereo isomers of uh, two uh, two comma three dibromobutane it's its mirror image and if you see this mirror image and this molecule they are you know if you can superimpose if you take this molecule up if you take this molecule up and put it on this molecule put it on this molecule every uh, carbon every substituent every hydrogen every bromine uh, and both they will uh, you know uh, they will superimpose on each other so it means they are one and the same they are not non superimposable they are the same molecules this is why so to convince yourself that you know the fisher projection of one uh, you know and mirror image are identical you can do one more thing you can rotate the molecule by 180 degree in the plane of the paper and you will see uh, you know it it will be the same so on rotation So you can rotate this molecule by 180 degree in the plane of the paper and you will see it is one and the same molecule. This, this molecule and this molecule they are one and the same. So that, this is why the number of stereoisomers in case of a molecule with two chiral centers with two similar uh, chiral centers is less than four. So in this case it's only three. So you see stereoisomer one is called as a meso compound. We call it as a meso compound even though a meso compound has asymmetric carbon it's an achiral molecule because it is uh, you know it is superimposable on its mirror image you see it is superimposable you can easily see they are superimposable you know uh, mirror image of each other and i already told you superimposable mirror images are optically inactive so mesos is the greek word for middle means a, a compound is a chiral when plane polarized light when it passes through it it you know the plane of polarization remains unchanged for this molecule that's why it is optically inactive so such compounds are known as these compounds are known as these forms are known as meso forms and they are optically inactive. you know a meso compound can be recognized it's very easy to recognize you know if the you know if the two chiral centers are uh, similar you know you can easily recognize them if they are similar then there is a chance of uh, you know uh, you know um, the presence of meso compounds a meso compound can be recognized by the fact that it has two or more asymmetric carbons and a plane of symmetry if a compound has a plane of symmetry it will not be optically active even though it has asymmetric carbons and a plane of symmetry cuts the molecule in half and one half is the mirror image of the other half and stereoisomer one has a plane of uh, symmetry which means it does not have a non superimposable mirror image it means it does not have an enantiomer you know it is a plane of symmetry this is stereoisomer one it has a plane of symmetry this one it also has a plane of symmetry this one has chiral centers but it has a plane of symmetry these are all meso compounds this molecule has chiral centers but you know it has a plane of symmetry so how do you recognize if if a compound has two asymmetric carbons if a compound with two asymmetric carbons has the same four groups bonded to each of the asymmetric carbons one of its stereoisomers will be meso com so all what you have to see is to look for similar chiral centers these are similar chiral this chiral center and this chiral center they are same this chiral center and this chiral center they are same this chiral center and this chiral center they are same means they are attached to similar type of groups this is what you have to look for if you are hunting down for if you are hunting for these meso forms meso forms are only possible in such compounds so this is all for uh, you know this uh, today's lecture uh, in next lecture we'll be dealing with the uh, biphenyls alenes
uh, spiro compounds, helical chirality, and uh, we will see some examples of, you know, uh, examples in each of these categories. Till then, goodbye, take care.